welcome into a, another quick hitter edition of the OG podcast, Original Gangsters Podcast. I am your host, Scott Bernstein. Uh, I'm going to be doing these, you know, 10 to 20 minute quick hitter episodes. Uh, I'm trying to be, I'm going to try to do them weekly. Um, and today I want to talk about the Elmwood Park crew in the Chicago Mafia and some uh, court filings this spring related to a case out of Elmwood Park that has unearthed the fact that uh, right now uh, there are up to a half dozen informants, uh, confidential informants operating within the Elmwood, Elmwood Park regime, according to some uh, court filings from the spring of 2023 related to uh, reputed Elmwood Park figure. I don't know what rank he holds. Uh, his name is Michael Frontier. He is uh, an underling of a reputed power player in that family right now or in that uh, crew right now, uh, Mean Gene Cassano, who's facing an extortion case uh, in federal court right now. And uh, according to Michael Frontier's extortion case, which is separate from Gene Cassano's, um, the government put forth uh, some records that told the judge that a big chunk of the information or most of the information that had come uh, in that led to Frontier's indictment uh, a couple years ago was related to these six, six confidential informants. So I kind of want to break that down. And I also just want to kind of give an update on where Elmwood Park stands right now. Elmwood Park has always been a kind of a family within the family uh, of the Chicago outfit. I think now it's, it's more literal than figurative. I mean, before that was, you know, the base of power and the outfit for a long time when the DeFranzo brothers were around Marco D'Amico, they've passed in the last couple of years and the power has moved back to Cicero. Um, but from my reporting and my, my uh, researching and, and reaching out to sources that are uh, on the street in, in that part of Chicago right now, Elmwood Park is kind of Rudy Fratto's own fiefdom. Um, it kind of operates in some ways insulated from the rest of the outfit. Uh, I've been told that, you know, Sally De Laurentiis and um, guys like Albie Vina, who are the top shot callers right now, uh, Sammy Catadella uh, out, of, out of Cicero, um, have kind of let Rudy Fratto given him some level of autonomy uh, over in Elmwood Park. And he has a group of a lot of younger guys that are uh, loyal to him that, that he's brought in or that he helped bring into the outfit over the last 10 to 15 years. A, a group that hangs out, hangs out a lot in Burr Ridge at a restaurant called Capri. And uh, Rudy is, is like the godfather of that, that region of the outfit. And uh, he, he's treated accordingly. And whether he's close to the area right now or he's just a capo, um, whatever it is, he is treated as a boss in, in that Elmwood Park region. And I think how the outfit's evolving right now is that at least when it comes to Elmwood Park and Cicero, you have a group of younger generation guys that have come in to the outfit over the last 15 years or so. Um, that I'm told are, are kind of more loyal to the crew and the guys that are uh, sponsoring them within that crew than they are to the outfit as a, you know, as an overall organization. And I think that's what's happened in, in Elmwood Park right now. The, the, the money-making machine that was the DeFranzo brothers, um, you know, they're off the map now. Marco D'Amico is off the map. He was their, their main counselor and, and Rudy Fratto is kind of the last man standing. You got a handful of other guys that are alleged to be soldiers, um, guys that had different uh, roles over the years in Elmwood Park, Bobby Avenatti, um, Tony Dotti or Doty, um, Al Mitria, uh, a couple, a couple names that, that come to mind, Gene Cassano and uh, his, his brother and father before him who are now gone, uh, Angelo Cassano and Vito Cassano. But uh, a lot of younger guys. But just to kind of give a quick deep dive into what these uh, court filings say, 
uh, six confidential informants or a half dozen confidential informants operating in Elmwood Park. Uh, two of these guys have been opened as CIs for three decades, uh, 30 years. One uh, began in 1994. I believe one began in 1991. Uh, the guy that was opened, th these are all you know, just uh, referred to as numbers. Uh, we don't know who these people are. Uh, but, but the one that, that was opened in 1994 has been giving information on the Cassano family for 30 years. Um, and I would guess is a, is a reason that, that Gene Cassano is facing an extortion case right now um, or played a role in it. And uh, then you have another four guys that have started cooperating between around 2010 and 2017, 18. Uh, the cooperation has involved Gene Cassano. Uh, it has also involved Marco D'Amico, who passed um, about two years ago, and he never faced any cases for that from that cooperation. But uh, he was the outfit consigliere. He was the DeFranzo's kind of main advisor. Um, he he's gone now. But he one of these informants was giving information on him and Tony D, who was a, a right hand of of um, of Marco, uh, they called him the mover because he was a mover and shaker, a guy that uh, liked to party, but also was very connected and could move around to you know different crews pretty seamlessly and 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 help and, and, and hold respect. Um, Rudy Fratto, on the other hand, you know he was a he's a, he's a lightning rod, um, a guy that's very polarizing. You either love him or or can't stand him. He's very unapologetic uh, about being a gangster and wanting to be a, a, a shot caller in the outfit, uh, got his button according to federal records, uh, in, in a ceremony in, in 1988. And, uh, there are informants that have tied him to some of the murders, uh, that were taking place in the, in the mid eighties that, that Rudy allegedly made his bones on, uh, chunky, chucky, uh, chucky Inglesi, chucky English and, uh, little Lenny Yaris. So, you know, the, the, the court filings don't have anyone directly giving information on Rudy Fratto, but a lot of uh, people in Fratto's orbit. You have one of these in, uh, CIs was given information on, on John Pudgy Matassa Jr., another, you know, high-ranking figure for years. At one time was a cop of what was the North uh, Northside crew, was conciliary at some point in um, the last 10, 20 years. He's dealt with some minor legal problems the last couple of years related to some fraud in his social security filings. Um, but one of these guys was given information on him. He dates all the way back uh, through his dad to Sam Giancana and Cicero, a guy that in Pudgy has moved around to a bunch of different crews. And uh, then you also had uh, Gary Gagliano, who uh, another legacy in the outfit, his dad, Joe Gags, uh, was a was a big time enforcer. Uh, died pretty early, uh, pretty young rather, uh, in in the seventies. But Gary Gags, in these court filings related to Michael Frontier, is uh, alleged to to ha uh, be running prostitution rings uh, in, in Elmwood Park. One of these CIs appears uh, to be one of the women that he that he had or has uh, running some of these call girl operations. Um, just reading between the lines, I, I don't have any well, factual basis for that other than making some well-educated well -educated assumptions from, from the language and the paperwork. Uh, so you got a lot of rats running around uh, the Elmwood Park ship. Um, it, it should be interesting to see how that plays out. Will there be more cases that come against Elmwood Park guys? Like I said, there was nothing mentioning Rudy Fratto in, in those court filings related to Mike Frontier and Gene Cassano, but I have it on really good authority that uh, Rudy is, is now top dog in Elmwood Park. And uh, you know anything that's going on in Elmwood Park is going through Rudy. Again, he's a guy that's, He's OG, man. You know, he, he he's pushing 80 right now, but, uh, you know, conducts himself more like a guy in his 40s or 50s, has a, you know, a wicked pedigree 
you know, his, his dad and his uncles were, were all big time outfit guys. Uh, he is, did some prison time uh, from, from the uh, hired truck McCormick place stuff um, 10 plus years ago, came out of prison and, and was pretty vocal that he, you know, wanted to, to, to get back into a leadership role. And uh, according to court records, FBI intelligence reports and, and sources that I talked to, he is also a guy that for the last 20 plus years has been a representario or a liaison for uh, outfit bosses to uh, other crime families in the Midwest, specifically uh, Cleveland, Chicago, Kansas City. I mean, sorry, representing Chicago in Cleveland, Kansas City, um, Detroit. He, he, his family is, has run whatever rackets are, are in, the, uh, in the state of Iowa, dating back 50, 60, 70 years. So um, it, it will be interesting to see if this ever, but if it ever turns out to bite Rudy, um, could this affect Tony D, who, who is named in, in this uh, uh, in this filing as one of the confidential informants giving uh, information on Tony D, who was one of Marco's main guys, went to prison with Marco uh, in the 90s. Gagliano, I don't know, you know, I'd be a little worried about if I was reading those filings, if I was him. So, you know, only time will tell, but it, it, it's very enlightening, I think. Uh, we, I always say that just assume when you're in that world, just assume there are there are rats all around you, but to see it in black and white in paperwork saying that at least six confidential informants operating uh, within Elmwood Park right now, uh, it's it's pretty sobering. I think if if you're someone that <laughs> is looking at it from a from the perspective of being you know affiliated to Elmwood Park or in in the Elmwood Park outfit crew, um, but for someone who studies it, it, I felt like it was noteworthy and I wanted to bring to everybody's attention. Um, the future of Elmwood Park, I think, is up in the air. There's a lot of rumors that when Rudy Fratto eventually heads to that big social club in the sky at any point in the next 10, 15 years, um, that Elmwood Park would be rolled in to the Cicero crew and there'd just be three crews left, uh, Southside, uh, Cicero, and, um, and Grand Avenue. But uh, right now, Elmwood Park is, a, is a, a, its own crew, although, like I said, it's kind of separate but the same from the outfit. Um, and I, I think this is by design. And, it's, and in some ways it's been like this in the outfit for a long time, but now it's, it's even more accelerated or amplified where I don't know how much the right hand knows what the left hand's doing. Um, there is crossover between Cicero and Elmwood Park. A lot of those younger guys know each other, but uh, everybody's, you know, razor focused and, and, incredibly loyal to who's ever leading that crew more, more so than Sally D or uh, Albie over on Grand Avenue, uh, Toots Caruso in, in on the South side uh, or, you know, Jimmy, I who, who passed this year. So, uh, you know, keep an eye out for what's going on in Elmwood park. We don't know what's, you know, the, the frontier case is still being um, adjudicated. Same with the Gene Cassano case, um, which dates back to a 2000 alleged 2016 juice loan. So we'll keep we'll keep uh, updating you with what's going on in the outfit. But I wanted to just give you guys a little uh, uh, some nuggets of, of information about what's filtering out, you know, in the court system about what's going on present day in Elmwood Park. Um, again, six six rats that are that are running loose. So if you're if you're a part of the Elmwood Park crew, watch your back. And uh, I guess only time will tell how this will uh, play out in the court system or, or if it will. I mean, with these these two guys that uh, have been given information for for 30 plus years, there's there's been a couple uh, big busts out of Elmwood Park. But, you know, nothing that uh, w was that earth shattering. Obviously, we know the DeFranzos uh, skated from from a lot of stuff. I, I have no problem going on record at this point in time saying that. Uh, no knows to Franzo, the, the godfather of the outfit for, you know, uh, a good 25 years, 30 years, whether it be acting or, or, or actual boss or uh, street boss, underboss under Carlisi, 
you know, he, I believe he was a confidential informant and, and that's how we stayed out of prison, you know, the end. Um, so I, I don't know. It's interesting to see that these guys have been getting information for 30 years. I know Marco D'Amico took uh, a big case. Rudy took a case, uh, you know, Tony, uh, Tony D uh, and Bobby Abinati went down with Marco uh, in the 90s, but nothing that major. So, you know, who knows? But it's interesting to, to, to note that these guys have been informing since the early 90s. So that's it for uh, this quick hitting episode of the OG podcast. I'm Scott Bernstein. We will see you on a full length episode coming up soon for Jimmy Bucciolato, my uh, co-host. For Ben, my producer, I will see you later on the OG Podcast. I'm out. Mm-hmm.